السلام على من جعل الله الشفاء في تربته السلام على من الإجابة تحت قبته السلام على ساكن كربلاء فيا ليتنا ثم يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي يا سادتي فنفوز فوزا عظيما أما بعد قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عطيع الله وعطيع الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم صدق الله العلي العظيم وآمنا به نوروا مجالسكم بذكر محمد وآل محمد الله بسم الله Last night we touched upon a concept or the night before we touched upon a concept verse of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the people to obey him Allah. obedience towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the verse goes on to say wa ati'ur rasul and obey the commandments of the holy prophet wal ulil amri minkum for you find from this verse of the holy quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is introducing for mankind a hierarchy of authority in that at the very top of this hierarchy is the unparalleled creator of the universe wa laysa kamithlihi shay the you lord of the universe who cannot be comprehended in its entirety because the mind is limited in its intellect to comprehend the reality of the lord of this universe something which is finite can never comprehend something that which is infinite for therefore you have the lord of the universe the all-knowing the all-knowledgeable creator of everything within existence and you find that he has created us for a purpose and in order for us to understand the purpose of our existence and then to fulfill the purpose of this existence he introduces the second in this hierarchy chain of command you have rasulullah ashraf al anbiya muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whose message completes and finalizes the message and the efforts of all the other previous anbiya before him. And you find that the chain of authority or this hierarchy of authority does not end with Rasulullah. There is an introduction of a third party which whose obedience is equally obligatory upon mankind just like the way the obligation to follow rasulullah is mandatory upon us and this is understood from the verse in itself ati allah worship or obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ati ur rasul wa ulil amri minkum the fact that the verb ati or command is being used single once for both rasulullah and the ulil amri you find that over here the level of authority between both is the same even though one may have a higher position than the other but in regards to unconditional submission and obedience towards the ulil amr is recom is needed just like the way it is needed for rasulullah therefore it becomes our responsibility as we said in the first night to identify who are these group of individuals whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to obey and to take our teachings of the deen and the dunya from 
you find that one of their characteristics is that they need to be infallible in every aspect of their judgments. And you find that from the verse of infallibility, we are able to recognize them as per hadith narrated unanimously by the scholars of the Ahl al-Shia as well as the Ahl al-Sunnah in that they include the Ahlul Bayt made up of Rasulullah, Amir al muminin Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra and the Imamain al-Hassani wal Hussein salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'een. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. For having said this, as you take the Quran to be a book of guidance, which you begin to implement in your lives, you find that after you have recognized this chain of authority, whom we are supposed to submit to and obey in order to achieve self-perfection in this dunya, attain the highest level of bliss and happiness both in the dunya and the akhirah, it becomes important for us to search and seek for those role models who are an implementation of this verse in that it becomes our responsibility to look behind and to look through the pages of history to find which individuals lived and walked across the face of this earth such that their lives were a manifestation of this verse in that their entire life included obedience towards Allah the Prophet and the Ulil Amr, the Ahlul Bayt, unconditionally. You will find in every aspect of life, when you wish to succeed in a particular field, there must be a role model that you seek to emulate. There must be a role model who has set a benchmark for you in that particular field, such that if you want to succeed, you need to emulate and to seek inspiration from him. And similar when it comes to the advent of deen we need to look for those role models who can inspire us to become the best of the followers when it comes to following ahlul bayt the prophet and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having said this as an introduction there can be no better place than karbala itself to look and to analyze it becomes our responsibility as those practicing Shia who are actively awaiting for the dhuhur of the awaited Mahdi who will fill the earth with peace and justice just after it has been filled or like the way it has been filled with injustice and corruption. It becomes our obligation to seek and study the lives of the companions of Imam al Hussein who dedicated their lives in order to ensure that you and I have a deen today they become that source of inspiration such that if we emulate them we have a chance to make that list of 313 who will change the course of history for eternity upon the Dhuhr of the 12th Imam together with this fulfill the purpose of our existence many times a person may know what the purpose of his existence is the first step is to actually understand it, that goal, that purpose. Because if you do not understand that purpose, you cannot fulfill it. So the first step is to recognize the purpose of existence. Number two is to seek for those role models who you can emulate and see how they fulfilled this purpose of life. And therefore, you find that Karbala is the best starting point that you and I can have. And today, inshallah, we will try to analyze certain dimensions of the life of this great outstanding companion of Sayyid al-Shuhada by the name of Zuhair ibn al -Qayn. Traditionally, what is narrated by historians is that before Zuhair ibn al -Qayn met Imam al Hussein, he despised Imam al Hussein. So traditionally, within the books of history, and traditionally even within majority of the Makatil, the books that narrate the advent of the massacre that occurred on the day of Ashura, you will find that the history of Zuhair ibn al Qayn is introduced in this way, in that Zuhair ibn al Qayn was performing Hajj in the year 60 AH, the same year that Imam al-Hussein had to leave Mecca on the day of Tarwiyah to go towards Iraq. 
For traditionally what is narrated is that Zuhair ibn al-Kain completed the manasik of Hajj and he was returning back from Mecca towards Iraq. However, Zuhair ibn al-Kain was traveling in a caravan or a kafila of people who were from the tribe of Bani Fizara. As they were traveling back to Iraq and the route from Mecca to Iraq, the main highway route being a single route, it so happened that as Zuhair ibn al-Kain and his kafila, the tribesmen of Bani Fizara, were returning back to Mecca, they happened to meet together with Imam al Hussein. The route being single, the destinations being similar, it was as if they were traveling parallel to each other on that same route. However, the historians will tell you that this Bani group of Bani Fizara with which Zuhair ibn al-Kain was present, they despised Imam al Hussein to such an extent that as they were traveling across or traveling through this travel route, they would try and avoid Imam al Hussein to the greatest extent such that if Imam al Hussein stopped to rest during the day, they would make sure that they travel such that they do not have to be parable, parallel to each other. And if Imam al Hussein was traveling, then they would stop such that they do not have to meet each other face to face. This was the level of despise that they had for Imam al Hussein until they got to an avenue known as Zaruda, where the place for watering the animals and the access to water was only one and limited and at that point both the camps were forced to set tents next to each other and this is where one day when Zuhair ibn al-Kain was sitting with people from Bani Fizara having lunch, Imam al-Hussein sent his companion or sent his messenger to invite Zuhair ibn al-Kain towards his message and towards the revolution of Ashura. The narration then goes on to say that Zuhair ibn al-Kain and the rest of the people from Bani Fizara were reluctant to visit Imam al Hussein. So when the messenger came to Zuhair ibn al-Kain and invited him and said to him that Aba Abdullah al Hussein, the grandson of Rasulullah, has invited you and wishes to have a private audience with you, the narrations mentioned that everybody stopped eating and looked down and the way they were seated is as if there were birds seated on their heads. And at this point, because of the reluctance to answer to the call of Imam al Hussein. The wife of Zuhair ibn al-Kain by the name of Daylam came out of the tent and she rebukes her husband Zuhair ibn al-Kain. She says to him, O Zuhair, how is it that the grandson of the Holy Prophet invites you for a conversation to have an audience with you and you refuse to accept? If you do not wish to sit with him, then at least just go and listen. If you do not wish to follow him, just go and listen. See what the man has to say and then make up your mind. The narration then goes on to say that Zuhair ibn al-Kain went, visited the Imam and in a private conversation which lasted literally a couple of moments. The words that are used in the maktal to describe this private meeting of Imam al Hussein with Zuhair ibn al Qain, the narrations mentions, فَمَا لَبِثَا أَنْ رَجَعَ إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ مُسْتَبْشِرًا مُصْفِرَ الْوَجْحِ He did not stay with Imam al Hussein except for a few moments and he returned back to his tent telling his people that I have embraced the religion of Imam al Hussein and the message of Imam al Hussein. And he says to his wife, Daylam, now that I am with Imam al Hussein and going to Karbala with him, I hereby divorce you because I do not want you to accompany me to Karbala and I do not wish for any harm to fall upon you because of me. He then tells his tribesmen or the tribesmen from Bani Fizara, that this is our final meeting point. If you wish to join us with Aba Abdul Al Hussein, you are welcome. If not, then this is the final separation. This is what, or this version, this account is what is traditionally narrated by the historians. Tayyib. No. <coughs> Zuhair ibn al Kain so far despised and was reluctant and unwilling to meet with Imam Hussein. This is the summary from this narration. And then you have another narration that states, again, by the historians, majority of the historians, in fact, all the historians that talk about Karbala narrate this, 
They say that they're on the ninth of Muharram, which is known as the day of Tasua, when the forces of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad had reached their peak in Karbala, a force of 70,000 people. Ibn Ziyad and Umar ibn Sa'ad wanted to wage war on the ninth of Muharram. Which is why as the horses came galloping and this inshallah we shall discuss in a little bit more detail on the ninth night. But as you may already know, as the enemies came galloping towards the tents of Imam al Hussein, the Imam sends his brother Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas together with a contingency of 30 horsemen. From them was Habib ibn Madahir and Zuhair ibn al kain to go and see what the enemy forces want. They go towards the enemy forces. Umar ibn Sa'ad says that we want to wage war today. Abu al-Fadil goes back to Imam al Hussein, and Imam al Hussein says to Abu al-Fadil, tell the people to give us spite or to give us enough time for this one night such that we may worship Allah and the battle will happen tomorrow is in the 10th. As Abu al-Fadil had gone back to seek the command of Imam al Hussein, Zuhair ibn Kain stood in front of the enemies and addressed them. He said, why is it that you are insistent on fighting upon or waging war against the grandchildren of Rasulullah. And at this point, a person from the enemy camp by the name of Uzra ibn Qais looked at Zuhair ibn al kain and he said to him, O oh Zuhair, what are you doing with the camp of Hussein ibn Ali? Indeed, we know you to be an Uthmani before this. Uthmani was a term that was given to a group of people who believed that Amirul Mu'mineen was responsible directly for the killing of Uthman, and in addition to that, Amirul Mu'mineen did not do enough, wal ayadu billah, to seek justice for the killers of Uthman. Therefore, because of this hatred for Amirul Mu'mineen due to the death of Uthman, they pledged allegiance and they formed a united alliance with Bani Umayyah. You find these were the same group of people who fought in the battle of Jamal and went on to become the same group of people who fought in the battle of Sifin with Muawiyah against Amir al-Mu'mineen. This is what is mentioned about Zuhair ibn al kain traditionally. Number one, he was unwilling and reluctant to visit Imam al hussein or to listen to Imam al hussein initially. And number two, that prior to meeting Imam al hussein his allegiance was with Bani Umayyah in that he was a hater of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Tonight, in honor of Zuhair ibn al kain and to pay tribute to Zuhair ibn al kain we shall analyze these two points of history to see whether they are actually accurate or not. And what was the real position of Zuhair ibn al kain number one. And number two, what was the contribution from a military perspective of Zuhair ibn al kain on the day of Ashura? We begin this with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. When we want to analyze and establish the truth in regards to historical incidences like these, as a scholar you will find that the chain of narrators has very minimal significance, if any. Principles of jurisprudence will teach us that when we are trying to establish a given truth from a historical occurrence, it is more believing and it is more appropriate, rather it is more correct for a person to look for historical indications known as karina, plural karain, to see whether there are any other historical incidences which will either support this claim, establish the claim, or negate the claim. Therefore, we will focus on the rest of the lecture instead of a sanad to look at historical indications. As per the narration that Zuhair ibn al kain was initially reluctant to visit Imam al hussein and that he was trying to avoid Imam throughout the journey, you find that this narration is mentioned by a person from the tribe of Bani Fizara who was with Zuhair ibn al kain and then makes public this narration during the time of Hujaj ibn Yusuf al thaqafi So this person whose name is unknown from the tribe of Bani Fizara, is the narrator of the event. 
where he says, while we were returning back from Hajj, we were reluctant to be with Imam al Hussein and to travel parallel to him. Therefore, the narrator is mentioning the general sentiments of the people who were in the kafila and the general overall sentiments of the people is not a necessary reflection of the true belief of Zuhair ibn Qayn. Sometimes you can be walking with a group of people, for example, who believe, for example, smoking marijuana is acceptable. You could be in this group, but that does not mean that you as an individual who is a single part of the whole also subscribes to the same belief law. You can be within the group, but you find that your ideology is totally different. Therefore, from this simple logic, we are able to discount the fact that Zuhair ibn al Kain, also together with the rest of the Bani Fizara, despised the meeting of Imam al Hussein. This is one. In regards to the claim that Zuhair ibn al Kain was an Uthmani and an enemy of Amirul Mu'mineen before meeting Imam al Hussein at this area of Zarud. Is there credibility in this claim or not? Let us look at other historical indications, whether they establish this or they negate this. The first point when it comes to understanding the Iman and the Taqwa of Zuhair ibn al Kain, we fast forward to the day of Ashura. The day of Ashura, Salatul Fajr, Imam al Hussein together with 72 companions, Imam leads the Salatul Fajr after the Adhan is given. Upon completing the Salatul Fajr, the enemy ranks are beating their drums and blowing their trumpets, readily geared on their horses and horsemen and people with their armors. Insha'Allah, on the night of Ashura, we shall have an in-depth discussion on the military tactics employed by Imam al Hussein and by the enemy ranks, and you will get an idea of how intense this battle was. Insha'Allah, this is for the night of Ashura, if Allah gives us life. In any case, the day of Ashura begins, the enemy is ready to wage war. Imam al Hussein gathers his companions, performs a dua, and then walks out into the battlefield. And he delivers a khutbah. Like we said yesterday, stance of non violence. Try and end this conflict without shedding blood. Imam al Hussein gives a khutbah. A miracle happens. Imam comes back. The people are still insistent on war. At this point, Zuhair ibn al Kain asks permission from Imam al Hussein. And he says to him, O oh my master Aba Abdullah, do you give me permission to address the crowd and to deliver a sermon? Perhaps I am able to guide them and prevent them from performing this great sin. Imam al Hussein gives him permission. And you find that Zuhair ibn al Kain comes into the Maidan. And these are lessons because we are trying to understand the life of Zuhair ibn al Kain such that we may, we may be inspired by him. Just like the way he was from the ranks of the Imam Zaman of his time, we aspire to be from the ranks of the Imam Zaman of our time. And we need to take lessons from Zuhair. Zuhair comes into the Maidan and delivers a khutbah. This is proof of his eloquence, his power of speech, his ability to have studied the religion and convey the message to other people. Ahibai, living in the West, each and every one of us needs to take this effort to become a muballigh, to understand his or her faith. And when the need comes in a very non-aggressive, logical manner, Guide the people towards the message of Ahlul Bayt. This is our responsibility. And the beginning step of this is ilm. Oh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. States talabul ilm faridatun ala kulli muslimin wa muslimah. To seek knowledge is an obligation upon each and every believing Muslim, male or female. There is no exemption or distinction between genders when it comes to seeking ilm. We have to be a community that is built on knowledge. Because this knowledge then is the key to iman and taqwa. 
Why do you find many times people waver in their faith? They are very easily compromising their belief because that background knowledge which then supplies them with Iman, a state of firm belief, that foundation is weak. And therefore, we have to be careful and we need to equip ourselves at a time where there is psychological warfare and people are selling ideologies in a market where they are trying to convince as many people to subscribe to their ideology. We need to be firm and have enough knowledge to distinguish between what is being sold to us, between what is right and what is wrong. For therefore, the first lesson we take from Zuhair ibn al kain alim, muballigh, fasih, eloquent in his speech, convincing in his debates, he comes forward to the people and he says to them, imagine this is the enemy ranks of Yazid, al who have placed Imam al Hussein under siege for three days, denied them water and food. Zuhair ibn Kain comes to them and says to them, O oh Muslims, you are our brothers. Allah. Allah. Look at the wisdom. Non confrontational attitude when it comes to the art of debating and trying to win the other side over. But then he draws a line as well. He says, O oh Muslims, you are our brothers so long as the sword is not raised between us. Because as soon as this war begins and the swords are brandished, there shall be no ties between us. So before we get to this point, let me invite you, I am paraphrasing parts of the khutbah of Zuhair ibn al kain Inshallah we have enough time to get through all the points in the lecture. He says that before the sword is being raised and blood is shed before between us, you are our brothers. But until then, there shall be no point of return once the swords come out. So let me invite you towards the family of the Holy Prophet. This is a man who has come to you with the word of God, the grandson of Rasulullah. Why are you insistent upon shedding his blood? If you are truly bent upon pledging allegiance to Yazid ibn Muawiyah, then go ahead and do so. Pledge your allegiance to Yazid and let Yazid and Imam al Hussein sort out their differences between themselves. Why are you insistent on shedding his blood? And you find that the people retorted back to Zuhair ibn Kain by praising Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, by praising Yazid. Zuhair ibn al Kain goes on to say, Do you not see what type of leaders you are succumbing to? What type of leaders you are pledging your loyalty and allegiance to? Bloodthirsty people who will do nothing for you except that they will gorge your eyes and amputate your limbs and crucify you on the palm trees. And Fi'lan, this is what Bani Umayyah did. Look what they did to Maytham tamar Crucified him on a palm tree, pulled out his tongue and left him to die on a palm tree. These are the types of leaders that you want to take as religious authorities. You find that they began to praise Ubaidullah and praise Yazid. And at this point, Zuhair ibn al kain says to them, God has tested us. has tested us and has tested you through the Ahlul Bayt in how we will deal with them. And you find over here that the response to the invitation towards Haq was that Shimr ibn Dhil Joshan shot an arrow towards Zuhair ibn al kain telling him to keep quiet and to leave. At this point, when Imam al Hussein saw that there is absolutely no chance for these people to get any sort of guidance or admonishment, he calls back Zuhair ibn al Kain. And this is the point now that we want to establish. He calls back Zuhair ibn al Kain and he says to him, 
لئن كان مؤمن آل فرعون نصح لقومه وأبلغ في الدعاء ولقد نصحت لهؤلاء وأبلغت لو نفع النصح والإبلاغ الله Imam al-Hussein calls back Zuhair ibn al-Qayn and he says to him, Indeed, the mu'min of Ali Fir'aun guided his community and went to great extent to admonish them and to prevent them from waging war against Musa. The mu'min Ali Fir'aun went to great extents to do tabligh and to invite people towards haq and similarly you o zuhair ibn al kain you have gone through great extent to guide this community but guidance shall not benefit them they are beyond the level of guidance allah you understand from this statement see ahibai whenever you read history whenever you read hadith kalima kalima every single word of the ma'soom needs to be analyzed why he said this where he said this why he selected this word over any other word in this statement imam al hussein sayyid al shuhada on the day of ashura is praising zuhair ibn al kain and is praising him by saying that you o zuhair your position is similar to that of mu'min ali fir'aun these are the words of a masum imam the imam sayyid al balagha when the imam speaks he speaks with the highest level of logic and the highest level of eloquence if the imam is comparing between zuhair ibn al qain and mu'min ali fir'aun in order for a comparison to be valid there must be similarities between zuhair ibn al qain and mu'min ali fir'aun you cannot compare two things unless there are similarities between them otherwise the similarity is one which is invalid and illogical for therefore in order for us to understand the adama and the true status of zuhair ibn al qain we have to go back and understand the life of mu'min ali fir'aun who was mu'min ali fir'aun the best place of reference is the Quran. Brothers, if you may kindly move a little bit forward such that the brothers who are joining us have enough space to sit at the back. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. <laughs> Imam al Hussein compares and says, Zuhair ibn al Kain, your position is like the position of Mu'min ali Fir'aun. Tayyib, who is Mu'min ali Fir'aun? The best place to return to is the Quran and the reference is Surah Al-Ghafir verse number 28. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنِ يَكْتُمُ إِيمَانَهُ أتقتلون رجلا أن يقول ربي الله وقد جاءكم بالبينات من ربكم. Allah subhanahu wa taala says a person known as the mu'min of Ali Fir'aun, mu'min Ali Fir'aun, as per our hadith, was a person whose name was Hizkil. He was the advisor of Fir'aun. But when Nabi Musa made his appearance and declared his Nabuwa and Fir'aun was going to kill Nabi Musa, this trusted advisor of Fir'aun by the name of Hizkil, who is given the title of Mu'min Ali Fir'aun, came to Fir'aun and the people and he said to them, O oh people, why do you kill a person who claims to have come from Allah? However, the shahid or the point is what? That وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ مِنْ عَلِ فِرْعَوْنِ يَكْتُمُ إِيمَانَهُ This trusted advisor of Fir'aun who is known as the Mu'min Ali Fir'aun was in a state of taqiyya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, 
وقال رجل مؤمن آل وقال رجل مؤمن من آل فرعون يكتم إيمانه يكتم إيمانه the one who was concealing his faith يعني شيء عجيب جدا when you find the nawasib come and they cause mass killings of the Shia because they perform taqiyya calling us kafir before because we do taqiyya Habibi taqiyya is an ayah verse mentioned inside of the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising Mu'min Ali Fir'aun for being in a state of taqiyya Imam al-Sadiq says he was in a state of taqiyya for over 600 years in that he concealed his faith from the general people around him, his community, including Fir'aun. And you find Imam al Hussein is telling Zuhair ibn al Kainya, Zuhair, your position is similar to the position of Mu'min Ali Fir'aun, in that Zuhair was never an enemy of Ahlul Bayt, he was never an enemy of Amir al Mu'mineen, he was never an Uthmani to begin with, rather, he was a person in a state of taqiyya waiting for the opportune time to come out and declare his faith and his allegiance to Ahlul Bayt which is why now when you refer back to that initial historical tradition we understand why when Imam invited Zuhair Zuhair only stayed with Imam for a couple of moments and then came back because that couple of moments is where Sayyid al-Shuhada told Zuhair ibn al kain that from now your time of taqiyya is over. You are with Hussein ibn Ali and this is Karbala. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So the first indication that Zuhair ibn al kain was a loyal believer of Amir al muminin and a follower of Amir and Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein from the very first day, but he was in a state of taqiyya. He had not openly declared his allegiance towards Sayyid al-Shuhada, especially with the people from the tribe of Bani Fizara, whom he was returning back with from Hajj. This is the first indication, the kalam and the praise of Imam al Hussein for him. That is you, Zuhair ibn al kain you are just like the Mu'min Ali Fir'aun. There is no difference between you. If you refer back to the khutbah of Zuhair ibn al kain which is also translated in English, and you refer back to the tafsir of this verse, number 28, Surah Al-Ghafir, you find that even the way Zuhair talks with the enemies on the day of Karbala is the same style of Mu'min Ali Fir'aun, the way he spoke with Fir'aun. As if Zuhair had studied the life of Mu'min Ali Fir'aun and used the same approach for the day of Karbala because indeed the Musa of that time was Imam al Hussein and the Fir'aun of that time was Yazid. This is the first indication, the kalam and the praise of Imam al Hussein. The second point or the second indicator that Zuhair ibn al Kain was from the most loyal companions of Amir al Mu'mineen as opposed to what the traditional historians narrate is the event of the night of Muharram and the event sorry the night or the eve of Ashura the eve of Ashura all the companions are sitting in their tents one is reciting Quran, one is reciting Salat, one is sharpening the sword, one is preparing his arrows, one is preparing the bow, one is preparing the horses, one is preparing the armor. As they are all preparing for battle the next day, Zuhair ibn al Qain comes to Mawlana Abul Fadl al Abbas. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. He comes to Mawlana Abul Fadl. He says to him, Oh Abbas. I would like to speak to you. Abu al-Fadil, Ba'ad, standard bearer, flag bearer of the army, chief commander of the army. Abu al-Fadil goes, he says, yes. Zuhair ibn al kain sits him down and he says to him, O oh Abbas, do you know why you were born? Ajib. Zuhair then goes on to tell Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas that after the death of Sayyida Fatima al-Zahra salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayha Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad 
your father Amirul Mu'mineen was looking for a wife who would then give birth to a champion battalion horseman who would be a source of support for his son Hussein in Karbala which is why your father married Sayyida Ummul Banin and through this marriage you were born for the day of Ashura which is tomorrow for I ask you Abbas tomorrow be in your full courage Abul Fadil smiles at him and he says to him, O oh Zuhair, you want to encourage me, Abbas, to fight tomorrow? I shall show you a war that the Arabs have never seen in the pages of history. You take this incident. How did Zuhair ibn al Qain know such an intimate detail about the life of Amir al Mu'mineen if he was from the enemies of Amir al Mu'mineen? Such an intimate detail that Imam al Hussein or Amirul Mu'mineen is looking for a wife and then he which will give birth to a child who will support Imam al Hussein with everything. These are secrets of a family, these are secrets that would not be exposed to any other person unless he is from the closest of your closest companions. And therefore, from this narration, we find our second indication that Zuhair ibn al Qain was not Uthmani like the way the people state. Rather, he was an Alawi, and every drop of blood in his body was shouting out Wilaya of Ahlul Bayt from the very beginning. This is number two. And the third indication is mentioned in Kitabul Irshad by Sheikh al Mufid. Whereby we find that in reality Zuhair ibn al Qain was in a state of intidhar for over 40 years. Allahu Akbar. You and I today are also in a state of intidhar for our Imam Zaman. The same way Zuhair ibn al Qain was in a state of intidhar for the day of Ashura. What is the proof? Zuhair ibn al Qain himself narrates, and this is mentioned in Kitabul Irshad of Shaykh al Mufid. He says that 40 years ago, Yani Karbala is taking place on 61 AH, 20 AH or 21 AH. Zuhair says that I met with Salman al Farsi, Yani Salman al Muhammadi. Rasulullah used to say, Salman minna ahl al bayt, one of the highest, greatest companions of Rasulullah and Amir al Mu'mineen. That Salman who was given the ilm al manaya and ilm al balaya. You find that this Salman, Zuhair is saying, Salman came up to me 40 years ago after a certain war had taken place and he said to me oh Zuhair be aware of that day when you will be from the Ansar of Sayyid al-Shabaab Ahl al-Jannah and will gain the greatest victory for Salman had already prophesied Zuhair's role in the advent of Karbala and Zuhair ibn al Kain had kept his faith concealed in a state of taqiyya from the general people waiting for that opportune time where the end of the intidhar would coincide with the end of his taqiyya. State of intidhar. To be ever ready to be with your imam when that call comes. Zuhair is on a journey in the middle of the desert returning from Hajj. Allah, this is a lesson for us. In the middle of a desert returning from Hajj, the call of his Imam comes. Zuhair does labaik without thinking twice. He divorced his wife for Imam al Hussein. You and I have this Iman? You and I are ready? Are we truly in a state of intidhar? Are we willing to give up everything and anything for our Imam? These are the nights of reflection. These are the nights of seeking inspiration from Zuhair ibn al-Qain. Who is this Zuhair ibn al-Qain? 
When you do his ziyara, Imam al-Sadiq says, refer to the ashab of Imam al Hussein by saying, Bi abi antum wa ummi. Allah says in the Quran, wa bil walidayni ihsana. That same walidayn which you are not even supposed to say off to. When it comes to the ashab of Karbala, Imam al-Sadiq says, say may my father and mother be sacrificed for you, Zuhair ibn al kain <laughs> Allah. Tibtum wa tabatil ardu allati fi hadufintum. Karbala with all its adama. Karbala the land of shifa'a. Karbala the land of jannah. Despite all this, Imam al-Sadiq says, Karbala, you became Karbala because the ashab of Imam al Hussein are buried inside you. The likes of Zuhair ibn al kain Are we truly ready? When we sit after our salat and we say, Allahumma ajjil li waliyyin al-faraj. Are we true in this claim? Are we willing to give up everything that we have? Ya subhanallah, we live at a time where people are willing under pressure to give up their lives. Today, pressure to earn a good job, sacrifice the teachings of the religion. In order to have a good social status, sacrifice the teachings of the religion. Pressure of secularization, pressure of integration, pressure of everything. People have become the first to dilute their faith. Are we truly loyal to the Imam in the way that the Imam wants us to be? Look at the stance of Zuhair ibn al kain on the 9th of Ashura. Beginning night of Ashura, as soon as the time of Maghrib sets in, Imam al Hussein gathers his companions and he says to them, Oh, my companions, you have been with me throughout the entire journey. To paraphrase the words of the Imam, you have been with me the entire journey. You have been under siege in the desert. I have seen you hungry and thirsty for three days, suffering at the brink of death. Tomorrow I am going to be killed. I give all of you permission to go back to your homes and in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will say that you were loyal companions. Allah. There would be no sin on them if they left. Imam is giving them permission. At this point, you have the likes of Zuhair ibn al kain stand up. Zuhair ibn al kain stands up in front of all the companions. Look at this ishq. Look at this loyalty towards the Imam Zaman of his time. He stands up and he says to him, Ya Aba Abdullah, La wadad tu an kutil tu thumma nushir tu thumma kutil tu thumma nushir tu haqadha meet marra or alf marra. He says, I wish that I could be killed and then my ashes from my corpse to be scattered and then to be resurrected and then to be killed again and then for me to be burnt and my ashes to be scattered again I wish for me for this to happen to me 1,000 times in your way and still I would not leave you for this in ziyarat and nahiya imam al hujjah sends salam on Zuhair ibn al kain salu ala muhammad wa ala muhammad Why these are the days of Ashura, the days of contemplation? Are we from those who are staunchly loyal towards Ahlul Bayt? Or are we those who go and compromise Ahlul Bayt? And many times there is this misconception that in order for you to be loyal to your faith, you have to be aggressive. No. There is no Bubayana between the two. These are the nights of inspiration. And becomes our responsibility to honor companions like Zuhair ibn al kain 72 stars that Imam al Hussein says, companions like these, I do not know of any companions better than my companions. How much of their history do we know? Are we taking them as role models? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of us to seek inspiration from them. Because at the end of the day, Imam al Hussein is Rahmatullahil Wasi'ah. 
the manifestation of the abundant mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In these majlis aza, ask what you want from Imam al Hussein, and Imam will give you. And when you ask, ask for that Iman. Ask for that loyalty to be by him at all times. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Every one of the 72 companions of Imam al Hussein was a battalion on his own, without a doubt. But from these 72 companions, Zuhair ibn al Qain was an army on his own. And in the Battle of Karbala, he participated in five incidences that outline him and single him out from all other companions. And all of them are great. The first position of Zuhair ibn al Qain is that on the day of Ashura, when Imam al Hussein set his ranks together, he appointed Zuhair ibn al Qain to be the commander of the right wing of the army. Inshallah, as I mentioned before, Laylatul Ashura, the night of Ashura, we will discuss the entire battle format. But for now, this is sufficient. Zuhair ibn al Qain was made the commander of the right wing of Imam al Hussein's army, and the narration mentioned that as soon as the war began you find that the enemies tried to attack the camp of Imam al Hussein from the right wing over 1200 horsemen with spears and with arrows and swords coming towards the direction of Zuhair ibn al Qain you find that the maktal says that under the leadership and the command of Zuhair not a single person from the army of Imam al Hussein budged not one of them were defeated they maintained their ground and instead they forced the army to retreat this is that Zuhair ibn al Qain number one his position as the commander of the right wing of the army of Imam al Hussein Number two, the second stance that stands out for Zuhair ibn al Qain is that as they were attacking the right wing and Zuhair was able to push them back, and you find the enemies of oh, the enemies from Umar ibn Sa'ad and Shimar al Lain were not able to attack the Imam in any way. You find that Shimar then cried out to his companions, to all the rest of the enemies, that if you want to break through and break the ranks of Hussein, then light the tents of the women of Imam al Hussein on fire Allah look at the sign and the simat of a coward that even in a battlefield they despite outnumbering Imam al Hussein they still did not have the courage to face him face to face instead they went around and they tried to light the tents on fire Al Qom Abna Al Qom. Yesterday, these are the people who burned down the house of Sayyidah Fatima al Zahra. And today, they come in Ashura to attack the tents of the women. The narration mentions that as soon as Shimmer shouted out, attack the tents of the women, the narration mentions that the children heard this and the children came wailing out of the tents, hungry and thirsty for three days, a war in front of them. When they heard that their tents would be fired, they came out crying. At this point, the narration mentions when Zuhair ibn al Qain saw this, he could not walk away, he could not bear to see the children of Allah. Muhammad cry so he took a contingency of 10 men and attacked Shimmer and chased their 500 men away Allah Zuhair ibn al Qain come to show me gariba <laughs> Zuhair ibn al Qain come to show me gariba who is there when they are burning the tents of Zainab and Sukaina is running out Allah Allah these are the companions of Imam al Hussein who defended him till their very last drop. The first, second stance is that Zuhair chased away Shimmer and made sure that they do not burn the tents of the women while he was alive. The third stance of Zuhair ibn al Qain was that after they established the right wing and chased the ranks 500 horsemen under the contingency of Shimmer, him and Hur ibn Yazid al Riyahi went into the battlefield for a dual engagement. Ani Ahibai, I'm trying to 
draw for you a picture of the day of Ashura. And this is as if in your mind you are able to picture this battle and you are standing and you are witnessing. The narration mentions that Imam al Hussein sent Hur ibn Yazid al Riyahi and Zuhair ibn al Kain into the battlefield to fight in dual engagements. They were fighting side by side. The narration mentions that as Zuhair and Hur went into the battlefield, they would fight the enemies until they pushed them back and they would fight in such a way that if Zuhair was attacking the army, Hur is protecting him from behind. And when Zuhair became tired, Hur would go and attack the army and Zuhair would protect him from behind. The Maktal says, فَقَتَلُوا قِتَالًا شَدِيدًا وَقَتَلُوا مَا شَاءَ Allah. Do you know what this means? They kill the number of the enemies whose numbers cannot even be counted. Katalu Masha Allah. The narrator is saying the amount of casualties these two brave warriors inflicted on the party of Shaitan. They could not even count these people. This is number three. Number four, the time of Salat came in. Imam al Hussein asks for the war to be stopped. They are reluctant to stop the war, the side of Shimr. For you find Imam al Hussein gathers his companions, they recite Salatul Khawf, and two companions protect Imam al Hussein. One of them by the name of Sa'ad al Hanafi, and the other one was Zuhair ibn al Qayn. The narration mentions Imam was reciting the Salat in Qiyam on one side, and on the other side, Sa'ad is taking an arrow after arrow on his chest. The narration mentions as soon as Imam completed his Tashahud and did Allahu. Akbar Sa'ad fell down with 13 arrows in his chest. And when he falls down, what does he say? He says to Imam al Hussein, Oh, my master, did I fulfill my duties towards you? <laughs> 13 arrows this man has taken in his chest. He still says, I didn't do enough for you, my Imam. Allah. The narration mentions now the maktal of Zuhair. The narration mentions that after Salat al Dhuhr, Zuhair ibn al Kain sought permission from Imam al Hussein to go into the battlefield and to take revenge from the kuffar and to defend the family of the Holy Prophet. Imam al Hussein gives Zuhair permission. The narration mentions Zuhair ibn al Kain went into the Maidan on foot, wearing a helmet and an armor with his sword. He came in to perform the final jihad. He came into the Maidan reciting a poem, introducing himself. He said, Ana Zuhairun, Ana ibn al Kain, Adhudukum bis Saifi an Hussein, Inna Husseinan ahadu sabtain. من إترة النبي ال من إترة النبي التكيل البر الزين. He says, I am Zuhair. I am the son of Cain. I have come into the battlefield to defend Hussein with my sword. Indeed, Hussein is one of the grandsons of Rasul Allah from the pure progeny of purity and goodness. The narration mentions that Zuhair ibn al Cain attacked the enemies like a ray. Aging lion, dispersing them from the right side, dispersing them from the left side until they were reluctant to visit and until they were reluctant to fight against Zuhair. At this point, Zuhair returned back to Imam al Hussein. He did his final wida. He did his final farewell to Imam. He said to him, O oh Abba Abdullah, indeed my nafs and my ruh will be sacrificed for you. Indeed, today I will return back to meet Rasul Allah. Today I will go back to meet Hassan. Today I will go to meet Ali Yunil Murtada. Today I will will go to meet Jafar at Tayyar. Allah Zuhair ibn al Kain goes into the battlefield for the last time. The narration mentions he killed 120 people and sent them to Jahannam wa al Masir. When they were not able to counter Zuhair, the narration says that two enemies conspired against him. One of them came. Fata'anahu bi He mentions that they pierced a spear into the back of Zuhair. 
Ayrim Nilkain. Allah Allah, the spear got stuck inside the body of Zuhair, coming out just below his chest as he fell to the ground. Another Lain came. The Maktal says, Father He came and he stuck Zuhair ibn Cain with a sword on his head. Allah Allah, Zuhair fell down to the ground. Was Zuhair? When Imam al Hussein heard this, he said, Oh Zuhair, you leave your master Hussein alone in Karbala. إن لله وإنا إليه راجعون ولعنة الله على أعداء آل محمد من الأولين والآخرين يا الله ما تم حسين